book of Enoch, or First Enoch, was written at around about 300 B.C., that is 300 years before Jesus Christ ever roamed the face of this world. The book of Enoch is an extraordinarily unique book, containing material dealing with the origins of demons or watchers who fell from heaven to intermingle with the sons of men, to take wives for themselves, to create offspring or giants or the Nephilim. The book of Enoch contains material about a day of judgment and the lake of fire and how these watchers and ungodly men would be judged ultimately. So that's something that we should understand as Christians living 2,000 years after Jesus Christ. This concept of a day of judgment and lake of fire is not new or original with John in the book of Revelation, for instance. These concepts were already laid down 300 years before Jesus Christ ever roamed the face of this world. As Christians, we should familiarize ourselves with the book of Enoch because the New Testament writers explicitly quote from Enoch or allude to it. For instance, Jude verse 14 through 15, Jude explicitly quotes verbatim from 1st Enoch chapter 1 verse 9, and he also quotes from 1st Enoch chapter 60 verse 8, I believe. The New Testament authors were familiar with the book of Enoch. 2nd Peter chapter 2, the apostle Peter alludes to the book of Enoch and this idea of these captive angels being held in this abyss, being held for judgment. This explicitly comes from the book of Enoch. So I want to give you a couple of quotations from the book of Enoch and also show you the New Testament counterparts and how they are very, very close and how the New Testament authors were actually building upon or borrowing concepts from the book of Enoch. The first thing I want to quote from is from 1st Enoch chapter 12 verse 3. This is what Enoch says, and I quote, And I, Enoch, was blessing the Lord of majesty and the king of ages, and the watchers called me Enoch the scribe, and said to me, Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, Go declare to the watchers of the heavens who have left the high heaven, the holy perpetual place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as children of the earth do, and have taken wives for themselves. You have worked great destruction on the earth, and you will have no peace nor forgiveness of sin. And inasmuch as they delight themselves and their children, they will see the murder of their beloved ones, and they will lament over the destruction of their children, and will make supplication continuously, but you will not attain mercy and peace. So we can see at the outset that Enoch speaks about these fallen angels, these watchers who fell from their heavenly abode to intermingle with the sons of mankind and to take wives for themselves and to defile themselves with mankind. And it brought great sin upon them, and upon mankind. But like I said, we have this concept of these fallen angels leaving their heavenly abode explicitly alluded to in the New Testament. I have pulled up here Jude in verse 6. Jude says, You also know that the angels who did not keep within their proper domain, but abandoned their own place of residence, he has kept in eternal chains in utter darkness, locked up for the judgment of the great day. So there you could see that Jude is familiar with this concept of these watchers falling from heaven and intermingling with the sons of mankind and how they're going to be kept for the day of judgment and how God will judge them, the watchers or the fallen angels, for intermingling with the sons of man. This is very, very important for us to grasp as Christians living today because they were familiar with it. Jude was familiar with it. And if you read Jude and you compare Jude with 2 Peter chapter 2, it's almost like they're completely the same letter. Peter and Jude are on the same message and on the same 
uh, tone, they're talking about these angels and this day of judgment, and it all comes from Enoch. So this is something that I think we need to familiarize ourselves with, because if we don't, I think we're missing a great deal of the context. So again, let me speak about this day of judgment and how these watchers were going to be judged and how this abyss of darkness that Jude speaks about for these angels leaving their proper domain and Yahweh has thrown them in, a, in, a, in an abyss of darkness and he kept them for the day of judgment. That's not original with Jude and it's not original with Peter either. It comes from, like I said, the book of First Enoch. And I'm going to quote here from Enoch chapter 9 and verse 4. And I might mispronounce some of these names because they're kind of hard for me to understand or pronounce anyways. And it says this in verse 4. And again, the Lord or Yahweh said to Raphael, bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudial and cast him therein, and place rough and jagged rocks over him, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face, that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment, he will be cast into fire, and heal the earth, which the messengers have corrupted, or these fallen angels, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. Until the day of their judgment and their consummation, until the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. In those days they will be led off to the abyss of fire and the torment and in prison in which they will be confined forever. So there again you see how Yahweh throws these watchers and judges them in, a, in an abyss of darkness. And they're kept in chains and in darkness. And you, here you have Enoch speaking about these ragged and jagged uh, rocks over them. And they're, they're in this dark pit, in this abyss, if you will. But then they're going to come out of this abyss in the great day of judgment. And they're going to be judged. And they're going to be thrown into a lake of fire. So this is almost verbatim in Revelation chapter 20. You have the beast and the false prophet and all the wicked being thrown into this lake of fire that burns with brimstone and sulfur. This is something that is perplexing to us modern day Christians to say the least because we're not used to angels being involved in this, but they most definitely are. They are involved with this. Fallen angels were a part of this judgment day, which I believe took place in AD 70. That's because I'm a preterist. And again from the book of Jude, Jude says in verse 14, Now Enoch the seventh in descent, beginning with Adam, even prophesied of them, saying, Look, the Lord is coming with thousands and thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict every person of their ungodly deeds that they have committed in all the harsh words that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, again, this is an explicit quotation from First Enoch chapter 1 and verse 9. This is what this translation reads, and it says, And behold, he comes with myriads of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all works of their ungodliness, which they have ungodly committed, and all of the hard things which the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, that is a quotation explicitly from the book of Enoch. Jude is quoting from the book of Enoch when he speaks about this day of judgment. And here in Second Peter chapter 2, you have Peter talking about God did not spare these angels who sinned, but cast them into a pit and delivered them into chains of darkness, being kept for judgment. Again, that's back to chapter 9 of First Enoch. Enoch speaks about these watchers being thrown into an abyss or a pit. 
and being held for the day of judgment when they will be judged and thrown into the lake of fire. Again, this is a verbatim allusion to the book of Enoch. So again, if you want to see how Peter talks about these angelic beings being kept in chains for the day of judgment, how he explicitly alludes to the book of Enoch, especially in chapter 9, when Enoch speaks about these watchers being held in captivity for the day of judgment, uh, Peter plays on the same theme. He says in verse 4 of Second Peter chapter 2, For if God did not spare angels who sinned, but cast them into a pit, and delivered them to chains of darkness being kept for judgment. Now if you read of if you read 2 Peter chapter 2, you'll begin to realize that it's that it's a lot of like uh, like Jude. Jude and 2 Peter 2 are very very similar. Uh, they speak about the same things. So Jude is speaking about these fallen angels and he quotes about uh, Enoch, he quotes Enoch, and so does Peter, obviously alluding to Enoch, speaking about these angels being kept in chains of darkness, being held for judgment. I just read that to you from First Enoch chapter 9. These, uh, these concepts are not uh, original with Peter or with Jude. They come from the book of Enoch, and these sinners are so... These men, these, these men who are sinners, who blaspheme Yahweh, who are against God and against Jesus Christ, uh, these apostates, these Jews, if you will, they're so self-willed and they're so daring, as Peter says, that they blaspheme the glorious ones. And this word right here means angels. It's these angelic beings. This is not to be in reference to any kind of human uh, glorious human, like I guess, like a king or something. No, these are these are angelic beings. These sinners are so daring and so arrogant that they're so uh, willing to blaspheme these angelic beings, these good angelic beings. Very, very uh, interesting here. And he says, whereas angels who are greater in strength and power do not bring a reviling judgment against them before the Lord. So Peter's speaking about how. These angels or these bad angels are being kept in judgment and chains being held for the day of judgment. And these sinners, meanwhile, are blaspheming the holy or the righteous angels in heaven in the courtroom with Yahweh. I know these are foreign concepts to us today, but again, we need to familiarize ourselves with these things or, or else we'll be caught in the dark. We won't understand what Paul means when he says you are entertaining angels unaware. And he says that in 1 Corinthians. It's, these are very interesting things that we need to, again, to familiarize ourselves with again. Because if not, uh, we will miss the boat completely. But with that said, I hope you guys like this video. And if you do, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. God bless.